Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, custom formulas and how to use them in Mosaic. So custom formulas are used to parametrically move points and uh, operations in usually in the parts editor. You can do it in the operations tab or the shape tab. Pretty much anywhere you can see a little uh, calculator box there. You click open the calculator box, it'll give you the option to uh, make a custom formula. So that's to parametrically change the size of your part or you know change the location of an operation based on the size of the cabinet or parametrically change several different things. So uh, you can change dado lengths, you can change hole sizes, you can change the location of the hole size, you can make custom tool paths all based on the part size. Uh, and it's pretty convenient that way. You usually want to use it in the parts pro uh, part properties menu, and you'd usually want to do that again in your in your custom library, your your main library, because you're setting it up to parametrically stretch. You may as well save it to your library, or you can save it here too. That's another option. Uh, so one thing to note: let's open up the formula tab. So this is the menu for the formulas. So it's always in millimeters, as you can see here. All numeric values must be in millimeters. It will display it in inches here, but it's it all. this output needs to be in millimeters. So there is a handy, if you just hover there, you can see you can multiply by two millimeters to get a millimeter dimension, or 25.4, it's the same thing. Um, it's not really traditional bed mass, which I'll explain later you kind of need to have everything in its own bracket to call it the order in which the formula is performed. Uh, you also, uh, let's see here, so then another handy thing is these three boxes down here. These are the uh, the different parameters you can call out in, this is the box here where you type in your formula. These are different parameters you can type in to call out the set numbers. You wouldn't really want to call up something that says the word center, you want to call up a number. So you want to make sure that, so here you can call up any of these, you can call up anything that's in the parameters that you need to call up in your formula. You can also, if you have to call up, you say, say if joint fast equals Richelieu Titus, then make this, make that, blah, blah, blah. You can do all that too. That's a little bit maybe further than you'd need to go because you'd want to go into other menus before chasing that. Uh, so here, let's see here. We have a hole and we are creating a formula. Let's get out of here for a second. We've created a borehole and this sets the X, Y location of this borehole and mm -hmm. shows a little handy doodad here showing you that X is this way which means y would be this way. Uh, this is the width, this is the length. Those are all important things. So what we wanna do, say I wanna constrain that into the center of this part. I wanna call up the length. Uh, the next handy thing is in the reserve tab here. You can call up any of these. This is specific to this cabinet. So the width, height, and depth. You can call up the part length, the part width. Those are really handy, those two. You can call up the open width, height, and depth of the of an insert that will go inside. The drawer box width, height, and depth. Those are all the most convenient things that are in here. Another thing you can do is call up the thickness of the material for any anything in your material template. So, so basically your material template folder pops up and you can call out any of these. All you have to do is add .th to the end. So if you want to call out the unfinished end, you type in uend.th. U and dot th, and then I'll we'll call out five eighths. So in this case, I want to call out part L divided by two. All right. So when I click OK, this little box here is going to turn blue, and that's how you know that's constrained. You can also go to the shape tab and then stretch it height and width to tell you whether or not that's going to stay there. If I had, if I didn't have it constrained like that, and I stretch it out in the length, 
doesn't really stay in the same spot. So again, the x we have part l divided by 2, and that constrains it in the middle. And we'll say here on the y axis, I want part w divided by 2. That would put it in the center. Oh. Sometimes when you're doing formulas and you type it in, it doesn't appear to be in the right spot, but when you save it and get out of it, it shows up in the right spot. So part w divided by 2 gets you to there. So now you're constrained to the cent the very center of this part. Now let's say uh, this is where you want to put brackets in. Oops. And say I want to add one times two millimeters. That gets me to three and a quarter. So two and a quarter for half, one inch higher. So that takes me to three and a quarter. Now, if I want to set my depth, let's say uh, we'll find it here. And we'll go to materials. And I have toe, or actually it's the front toe. Where do I find that? I don't know, it appears to be toe. So if we hit toe, toe.th, that gives us our toe thickness. So that's going to set the depth. Now another handy thing you can do is you go to, uh, say you want to hide this, and this is where kind of the if part of these conditions work really well. Um, say if part L, so that's the length of the part, is greater than 20, well let's say 36. Uh, then you want to, this height is 0 or 1. You either want to it to be 0 or 1, and otherwise it's not going to work. So 0, if when you make this equal 0, that shows the operation or shows whatever you, the part, the point, whatever you're doing. Uh, 1 hides it. So I'm going to say after 36, I want it to uh, hide. So let's make it 1. All right, and then I have to add another one, which would be if part L is less than or equal to 36, then this becomes zero. Oh, one thing I forgot to do here. So if you want to call up that formula you were doing, you just highlight it here and click edit and that will bring it up here. So I need to make this times two millimeters or it will be uh, less than or equal to 36 millimeters, which is too small. Update and I'm gonna update this one too. Times two millimeters. Update formula. Click OK. So it's currently showing because it's 31 and a quarter. So we're gonna click OK. Click OK, and we're going to open up this so you can see we have a nice little hole here. And what I will do is just stretch it out. We'll say uh, 40. And when I update that, your hole disappears. When I bring it back to 28, your hole reappears. So as you can see, you can add just about any kind of hole, uh, whatever you need to do, hole. The same thing goes for the shape part, where say you have a point, or you add a point, and say you want it to be here, you can you know create a formula that says this location is this plus plus uh, whatever 
to keep it in that location. Another thing you can do in replace of custom formulas is use these little anchors in the shape in the shape tab. So say you want to anchor this point to that corner. All right. So then you can try to stretch it, and make sure it's staying in its right spot. You can add another point. Add another point, move that way up, lock that in the top right corner. See what that looks like when you stretch it. You know, formulas are a little bit more consistent or incredibly more consistent than the, these anchor corners are, but if you're a little don't you find it a little daunting to use formulas, then this is certainly another option. So another example would be say you have a shelf and you have an operation that you want to be on the shelf. So let's just make it a groove. So this is another handy thing which we'll teach you in another video. Um, let's say you want a dado along this whole sh front edge of the shelf. So it conveniently says front, left, right, and back. So you want this dado to be the full length. So you have width, length, so that's the width of the dado, the length of the dado, the x and the y which are positioned right at this X here, which is in the center of the data on the one side. You can change that by the angle by changing it like that. So we're going to just leave it like that. We know for a fact that X needs to be zero. So we can click that. We can set it at zero. You basically want all these to be blue in a perfect world. So we know that's set at zero. We have the Y location. Let's say uh, you want that thickness to be the, the thickness of the back. So let's say you back dot th. So I'm calling up the back thickness and we click OK. So that's always going to be the same thickness of the back. You can also do this back thickness plus, if I go to dados, you can add in your dado slop. So d slop d. Plus D, slop D. Oops. Oh, D, slop D. There. Then you can see it added a little bit there for the slop. Now let's click OK. And in order to locate it on the Y, we need to go unfinished back thickness. What we want to do here too, let's copy this formula. So this is the Y location. Click OK. You want to make your width exactly that. So say I want this unfinished back thickness plus the slop. Click OK. So now the width of my dado is exactly the width of my back. Just in a hypothetical scenario, if that's what you're trying to do. This Y location, you need that. I'm going to highlight it or uh, put brackets around it, I'm going to put divided by 2. Okay, that sets me right on the edge, exactly on the edge. Now i got to make my length this number here, which we know can we can write in part L. And just like that, you have a dado that will stay this width no matter what. So this uh, apply data logic button here, this will, it, it will account for the radius of the tool that you're using to do this. So if you have, you're going all the way to the end of the part and you want your say round tool to go halfway past so that it clears out this full corner, you want to apply data logic in that way it will come and clear that full corner. So the tool goes a little bit past and then comes back down. Another thing you can do is you can make uh, run your depth by a parameter. So say you want your depth to be, you go here and your dado depth, you can pick any of your dado depths that you have here. So you want to call up that and then maybe you want to add a slop to that too. So dado top. Okay, that calls up your quarter. 
and let's just do the d slop d plus d slop d. Oops, d. Okay, so that adds a little bit of slop in there for your depth. And that's basically it. Again, you can use this hide option here to parametrically hide or show this this uh, setup here. So we're going to click OK, click OK, and as you can see, it's still showing data there. And what I'm going to do is stretch this thing out big time. Let's make it something crazy like 40 inches. And then we'll go back to this part. As you can see, the data continues to stay the same because it's calling up those formulas. So that's basically it for our custom formulas. It's kind of a long one, but hopefully that helps anybody out having any trouble with formulas.